Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. A lot to get to today, Crystal. Yeah, we have a jam-packed show for yeah. real. We actually have some rare good news. Julian Assange is free. He was able to strike a plea deal with the government. We'll give you all of those details. Also, I think, I think we're going to be able to have his brother join us for a reaction to this fantastic news. So get into all of that. We also have a viral clip from CNN, uh, Casey Hunt, their anchor melting down in an interview with the Trump spokesperson. This is we head, of course, into the first debate. <laughs> Today is the most expensive primary in history day in New York. Uh, Jamal Bowman really fighting for his political life um, in particular because of his pro-Palestinian stance. Millions flooded into that race. We'll break that down for you. We also have some big news out of Ukraine. They struck civilians in Crimea. Their rationale is preposterous. Obviously, we have sort of given them a blank check and opened the floodgates in terms of what they are uh, permitted to do now with our weapons. So extraordinary potential repercussions there. The media is airing blatant lies about a pro-Palestine protest that happened in LA. So we will show you that video and give you the truth of what actually happened. I'm looking at how Israel lost this war in Gaza, and we are also looking forward to having Arnaud Bertrand b join us to break down what's going on in France with their election. So as I said, a lot to get to this morning. We Lots. None of it we could, we were trying to figure out, is there anything we could drop, but it's also timely. It's we too have timely. To do it, to yeah, it. That's right. Uh, so I, I'll save the pitch for too much. Just thank you, everybody, premium subscribers. Breakingpoints.com, support the show. You're going to be able to check in with us during the debate, some special coverage, and support all of our work here. But with that, let's get to Julian. Assange. Yes. So as I said, breaking news. Julian Assange is free. Let's put this up on the screen. We got a little bit of video courtesy of his wife, Stella. Um, you could see him there being transported here. I think he's signing some sort of paperwork with regards to this plea deal. Here he's boarding a plane. Now the expectation is that he is headed to the U.S. territory of the Northern Mariana Islands. There he will have a court hearing in order to, you know, solidify, finalize this plea deal. Then Julian Assange after 12 years, I think seven years in the Ecuadorian embassy, another five years in the UK Belmarsh prison, Julian Assange will be headed home to Australia. So just on a personal level, I mean, I've had the chance and you've had the chance mm -hmm. to, Sagar, to interview his brother. I've interviewed his father. Julian himself is a father, a husband. He has two young children at home. Um, so just on a personal level for this man who they have clearly tortured and tried to uh, make an example of to discourage any other courageous whistleblowers from coming forward, I am so relieved and so happy for him and for his family that he will be going home. Let's go ahead and put the details up on the screen per NBC News of what this plea deal entails. So he is going to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information. This, of course, is in regards to his uh, obtaining and publishing secrets uh, way back in the George W. Bush era, uh, the most noteworthy of which exposed war crimes being perpetrated during the Iraq War. Worth noting, the individuals who committed those war crimes have never faced a single day in prison, while Julian, again, has been uh, locked up in one form of detention or another for over a decade. Um, his wife, Stella, she says that she is going to continue to seek a pardon on her husband's behalf. She said accepting a guilty plea on an espionage charge created a, quote, very serious concern for journalists across the world. And Sagar, she is certainly correct about that. Of course, for, for you know, for Julian, he needed to do whatever he needed to do to get home to his family. Um, his brother has talked about, you know, his, his poor health, his concerns that Julian would literally die in prison. I think that was uh, very much a real and ongoing concern. He was in the midst of these extradition hearings that we had yes. covered in the UK, Byzantine process. He had uh, actually won uh, on some level. He was, had the ability to continue to, to uh, challenge that extradition. But, you know, I watched Glenn Greenwald, who has covered this more closely probably than anyone, yesterday in his commentary. And he was saying he always doubted that the Biden administration really wanted to have the spectacle 
of Julian Assange on trial here in the U.S. in an election year and what that would all entail, especially given all their you know BS rhetoric about you know, the free press and how much they care about that. So he was not surprised that they were able to come to this plea deal, but it's, um, you know, personally I was because it just seemed like so hopeless, like nothing was moving, like they were so immovable in terms of changing their position here. And just so people recall under the Obama-Biden administration, they decided that even though they also hated Julian Assange, you know, they persecuted him in, in their own ways, they decided they could not prosecute him without criminalizing all of journalism. It's under the Trump administration that they shifted and actually indicted him. The Biden administration now has continued with that Trump prosecution, and now we have the news today of this uh, plea deal. Yeah, that's right. So the details, as you said, I think what Glenn gets at, and from what I understand is correct, is that in some ways they're like the dog that caught the car. They indicted him, they prosecuted him, they went through the extradition, and they were like, oh no, we're gonna have to prosecute him. Crystal, he would have been on trial in our backyard, right here in suburban Virginia. Yep. So they did not want the spectacle of extradding him to the United States, effectively putting a political prisoner on trial here in Washington, the DMV area, us, every other news crew in the world would have been down there covering the trial day in and day out. It also may have dredged up some uncomfortable things about, let's say, the U.S. Uh, war in Iraq, not to mention 2016, Russia, the Hillary Clinton emails. I mean, and let's be honest, that was his real crime here, right? Um, is And part of the reason why the media and many others turned against him prior yeah. to Although I, I do want to note, the yeah. actual charges are, have nothing no, no, to do with that. Yeah, what but in terms just, of Democrats turned on him yes. in the context of the 2016 exactly. election because they were told by the media that, oh, he was, you know, on Putin's side and he was exposing, you can go and read exposing the, things to benefit Russia, basically. You can go and read the New York Times op-eds from 2014 up until 2015, every single one. Let Julian go, let Edward Snowden go, they didn't do anything wrong, all of this. Then WikiLeaks came out, boom, that's it for 2016, and now he's public enemy number one. Let's not leave Trump off of the hook and his administration, Mike Pompeo, for forget landmark speech in the early days of the administration calling WikiLeaks, quote, a hostile, a non-state hostile intelligence service, effectively green lighting like covert operations against him. There was some real fear in this country. They were actually going to try and assassinate him inside of the Ecuadorian embassy. There, was a, there was a plot that yeah, was crafted. That, right. Yeah, to, I mean, this is, has been reported out. I believe it was Michael Isikoff who mm -hmm. reported that they actually were contemplating an assassination attempt of Julian Assange yes. in the Ecuadorian embassy. Instead, they decided just to prosecute, to prosecute him and indict him. him. Throw him in a 23 and one facility um, in uh, the UK, extra, pursue the extradition. This charge in the Northern Marianas uh, basically means he no longer has to step foot on main, uh, on the continental United States soil. He gets to enter his plea agreement here for the dissemination of what is a class, a conspiracy to disseminate classified um, information. He'll enter his plea and he'll proceed on to Australia. One of the interesting things is we had here on our show, Australian lawmakers who were lobbying for his release. Right. Don't forget also the Prime Minister of Australia and others. The tides really turned where Aussies really began to view this as a matter of national sovereignty. And there are Five Eyes Intelligence, I mean, arguably one of the closest uh, allies the United States have. Now, like, you cannot drag our one of our citizens through your kangaroo courts and stomp all over you know, the First Amendment and the free press in the process. I will say just the muted reaction so far from much of the media shows they still have not forgiven him for our 2016. There are it, the, the, many of those who would have criticized this under a Trump administration are staying silent, but there is no heralding of this by so-called First Amendment free press advocates in the way that it should be. So it is, uh, it is definitely a travesty of justice uh, what happened here. He did suffer more than a decade um, in imprisonment and basically being pursued for the crime of putting out information and conducting journalism. So I'm glad that he's free, um, but it's been a, it's been a long road for him. Yeah, it it has been horrific. Um, you know, I think probably there's a sense because I do think the goal with him was to make an example of him, to act as a deterrence against other whistleblowers who could courageously come forward, and they probably feel like they accomplished that goal. You know, I mean, given what Julian has been through, the way his health and his life, everything. I mean, the the suffering that he has been put through is quite extraordinary and quite horrific. 
Uh, so they probably feel like, all right, we, we did enough damage here to sig- significantly deter other potential whistleblowers. And then, as you point out, Sagar, it's just turning into both a pl- political issue because of the you know potential of having this spectacle of a trial on U.S. soil, and also a diplomatic issue because the Australian government became quite adamant in um, what was really significant and, and why we felt it was important to host those Australian lawmakers here when we interviewed them is – they were across the political yeah, spectrum. They were like left and right. Yeah, they were saying, listen, we don't agree on basically anything else, but we are united in the belief that Julian needs to be freed. He needs to be able to come home. And so when you combine those things together, that's how you end up with this plea deal. Um, just one more quick detail here before we uh, att- attempt to bring in his brother, Gabriel. Uh, apparently, the sentence that he is being given is the exact number of months that he served in that UK Belmarsh prison. So they can still, you know, they can still move forward with their, hey, we are criminalizing journalism here, but he won't have to serve any additional time in prison. So um, it is, of course, unfortunate that he was forced into this position of having to plead guilty. That's not on him. He needed to do what he needed to do to get home to his family and you know regain his freedom. That's 100% on the government, starting with the Trump administration. And you know, for those of you who believe Trump is some adversary of the deep state, Trump is the one who prosecuted him. Trump could have stopped that prosecution at any point. He could have pardoned him. There was some pressure on him at the end of you know his administration to do that. He didn't do any of that. So just keep that in mind as you you know consider who this man is and what he's all about moving forward. Instead, Julian ultimately here is being freed under the Biden administration, and you know that's not to give them any flowers because they also could pardon him. They could have stopped this prosecution. They could have stopped uh, attempting to extradite him from the UK at any time. But at the very least, it is fantastic, fantastic news that at long last, Julian Assange is free. All right, let's go ahead and get to that interview with his brother, Gabriel Shipton. We are so happy and honored to be joined this morning by Julian Assange's brother, Gabriel Shipton. It's so great to see you, Gabe. Yeah, good to be with you both. Good to see you again. So I've I've had the opportunity to, to meet you in person, to interview you a number of times. I'll be honest with you, I was not sure that I would ever be able to ask you this question, which is, how does it feel to know that Julian is actually coming home? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good feeling. Uh, we're, we're not quite through the woods yet, but uh, Julian's on his way back to Australia. Uh, I was in contact with him this week. Uh, you know, he was calling me every day. He was so excited about Uh, getting on that plane. A little bit anxious, but uh, very excited about um, getting on that plane and making that long uh, journey home. He's got one stop uh, left before he gets home. He's going to stop in the Mariana Islands, which is the closest uh, US territory uh, to Australia, where he'll, uh, where hopefully a judge signs off on the plea deal. uh, And uh, then he can get back on a plane and do the six hour flight uh, six hour flight back to Australia. So yeah, it's an overwhelming feeling. Um, you know, so many people around the world have worked so hard to get to this moment. Um, your coverage uh, of Julian's case has been absolutely awesome. And yeah, so many thank yous and shout outs to go out to everybody who's been advocating for Julian for so long. Well, we appreciate that, Gabriel. Just tell us a little bit about uh, the process here. So as you said, Julian has got to arrive in, North, I believe, in Saipan. He's going to enter the U.S. courtroom and enter the guilty plea. What is the process then for his release? Will it be immediate? How many days can we expect before we see him on Aussie soil? It should be an immediate release. Uh, we're expecting him to arrive uh, in, in Australia Wednesday evening Australian time. Uh, yeah, so the, the deal, I mean, I can't comment too much about it, but the, the deal is, uh, it's for time served. Uh, there's one count under the Espionage Act uh, for possessing and publishing uh, classified material. Uh, and yeah, he'll be released with time served and he should be able to just get back on that plane and uh, head directly to Australia. So uh, yeah, c- credit to the Australian government as well, who have uh, been working hard behind the scenes uh, to engage diplomatically to get this uh, all organized, as well as Julian's lawyers. What is your sense, Gabe, of what ultimately led to the pressure that was able to secure this deal and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, Julian's freedom? Well, there was a bit of a ticking clock, I, I think, because we had a high court appeal hearing, or Julian had a high court appeal hearing coming up on the 9th and 10th of July. 
and the High Court in the UK had drilled down on the freedom of expression grounds uh, related to the extradition, that Julian would not uh, have enjoy freedom of expression rights if he was extradited to the United States. And I don't think the DOJ really wanted to uh, be fighting a freedom of expression case uh, in a UK court during, uh, during an election year. But there was consistent pressure from the, from the Australian government uh, as well as in Congress, actually, you know, the, the Julian's constituency in Congress has been growing and growing and growing. Uh, so I think there's all of these things. Uh, Julian wouldn't be free without any one of them, but uh, it's definitely the Australian government who have been uh, working the levers and sorting out the, uh, all the little bits and pieces to make, uh, to make this happen. So they were very, uh, very big part of it. Well, and certainly credit to, to you. I know you've turned your life upside yeah, down literally. to fight for your brother's release. Your your father, of course, Julian's wife and, and his family um, have been a, a pivotal part of marshalling that support and keeping Julian's cause alive. Um, I know Stella said that she was going to continue to seek a pardon for Julian. Uh, she said that accepting a guilty plea on an espionage, char espionage charge, quote, created a very serious concern for journalists across the world. And I wonder if you could just comment on that. Yeah, so uh, I guess the political p position of the Biden administration has long been, uh, we can't interfere with the Department of Justice process. Uh, now that firewall is gone uh, once this plea is accepted. Uh, so really it's up potentially up to the Biden administration to really hit this home and do a pardon. Um, they don't really have anything to hide behind now uh, with this DOJ process. So they can, uh, the president can be, uh, has a chance to be magnanimous and and uh, do a pardon for Julian. And I know the press freedom organizations and, uh, and institutions like the New York Times uh, would probably be very concerned about, uh, about this precedent that has been set. So uh, it's up to the Biden administration now to uh, wind that back with a pardon. Yeah, we would hope so. Uh, last question for you on my end. What can we expect? Uh, what What is Julian's next plan? Does he just want to spend some time with the family? Uh, what is he looking forward to uh, from whatever you can tell us? You know, when I was uh, speaking to Julian, he was you know looking forward to visiting some of the places he knew from the time when he lived in Australia. He's been detained in the UK for the last 13 years. Uh, his health is not, not in great condition. So he needs some time to rest, to recuperate. Uh, he loves the Australian birds. Uh, he loves hearing the Australian birds. So I'm sure he'll be out in the bush uh, somewhere, uh, <laughs> listening to birds and going for a swim in the ocean and uh, doing all those things, uh, you know, all those simple things that have been denied to him uh, for so long. Spending time with his two small children, Gabriel and Max, my nephews, his wife, uh, my dad, they're all gonna meet him uh, on the tarmac when he lands. So yeah, hopefully happier times ahead uh, for Julian and our family. Awesome. Undoubtedly. Um, Gabe, I am so happy for you on a personal level. I'm so happy for you and all of your family. Please pass along that message to Julian as well. And thank you so much for taking a few minutes. Yes. I know you've got a lot of demands on your time today, so we're really yeah, grateful. Thank you we so appreciate much. It. Yeah, it's not, not often I get to smile through a hole. That's <laughs> right. I feel the <laughs> same way. <laughs> We're, we're very happy, and thank you for all everything that you guys do, too. Uh, we appreciate it's you, sir. Nothing. It's Keep great to see you. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad-free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show. Help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.